For submariners and naval divers who work under pressure in deep waters, it can be life-threatening when they encounter problems, especially decompression sickness or what is commonly known as the bends. This is a situation where due to sudden change in atmospheric pressure, nitrogen bubbles get trapped in the bloodstream, joints, brain and spinal cord and other parts of the body, causing pain, numbness and even death. In the event of such incidents, divers are treated in the hyperbaric chamber at the Navy's underwater medical centre. Amitu Jayanti, a military medical expert who specialises in hyperbaric nursing, works with a team of medical officers and other medics to tend to these injuries. For any diving illnesses or diving accidents that happen, we are called upon to react and to carry on with the treatment as prescribed. My role will be of an operator, a chamber operator, who will take care of the safety of the casualty or the patient, I would say. Then we make sure that he's safe, everything is safe for, before the, the chamber goes down, before we start the treatment. Okay. The hyperbaric chamber is pressurised with air and oxygen, simulating the environment that the divers work in underwater. The casualty is then brought back up to atmospheric pressure at a controlled rate to allow the bubbles to reduce in size and amount and be reabsorbed in order to restore adequate blood flow in the body. During the treatment, I'll be continuously communicating with my attendant, making sure the patient is safe and he's improving and at the same time monitoring the patient and making sure nothing is going wrong. In the case of submariners, Amitu Jayanti will be working on board the purpose-built submarine rescue ship called Swift Rescue. The ship will launch the Deep Search and Rescue Vessel or DSAR-6 to transfer submariners to the surface. Once back on board, Amitu Jayanti and the medical team will provide immediate medical attention for decompression sickness and trauma. Here we are looking at more casualties coming at one time rather than a single casualty. So there is a lot of challenges. We work hand in hand, we do a lot of drills. So all the communication between the medics have been overcome through all these drills. As a registered nurse and trained in critical care, Amitu Jayanti provides training for the SF's full-time national servicemen and NSMEN medics for deployment, either with the Navy's ships or on shore in the hyperbaric centre itself. She also trains ship crew, known as the first aid party, to augment the medical team on board the Navy's vessels. When an uh, emergency happens, okay, I, I could have just have two people, a medical officer and a medic there, and two hands are just not enough. We need um, first aid party to actually help them to make sure, making sure the evacuation means are settled for, make sure the patient is safe and can be evacuated as soon as possible. Throughout her 13 years of service, Amy Tu Jayanti has also been deployed several times to Indonesia to provide medical assistance in social civic activities and also to Timor Leste in peacekeeping and peace support operations. We're out in the field, so there are a lot of things we, we will not have access to. So we need to improvise, to be very quick with it. When we're out there helping them, I mean, it's really an eye-opener for me to see how secure and how safe Singapore is and how privileged we are. It's really worth the effort to be there, out there helping them. In collaboration with Singapore General Hospital, SAF medical personnel such as Emi Tu Jayanti are on standby after office hours, up to five times a month, at the hospital's hyperbaric and diving medicine centre. This stint helps to maintain a high level of operational readiness. There was an MOU signed between us and the SGH to actually collaborate in a exchanging of information at the same time making us a practice, our clinical practice in SGH. We did our treatment of the recreational divers when they sustain diving injuries. Like many working mothers, Amitu Jayanti has to manage long hours at work 
and looking after the needs of her children. And she juggles the two responsibilities with the help of colleagues and family. I would say it's pretty balanced because with the support of my parents and of course my sisters, I would say my husband is there to help me look after all this while I can do my work with a piece of mind, especially when I'm in overseas deployment. Initially, my mum was not really very supportive of my decision, but as time goes by, she knew what I was doing and she knows that what I'm doing is for the, for the nation and also to help people as well. For her, she, the, actually she do the work is very important. Because of the Singapore people, maybe, yeah, very important. Sometimes we Saturday also go over, sometimes she got night shift. Sometimes she go one month, one week, like that also. I say, you don't need to worry. You just do your work happily and come back. It's all about the people. Making sure that they have received the the immediate attention and making sure that they, have, they are well is definitely worth the effort because I'm saving somebody's loved ones. Although I may have missed uh, time with my kids, but I have actually saved a, a loved one. So that is definitely very meaningful to me. As a mom, I did uh, what I can do and definitely with my pillars of support helping me around. I think I've seen them grow, I've thought what values I've inculcated from my parents and even the force to instill in them, to prepare them for the future. Then as a service woman, I think I have more to contribute because I've just reached in the middle of my career. So I just definitely want to contribute more to, and do whatever I can as a service woman in whatever way I can.